welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. In this episode, I'll introduce the GFS concept of government expense, provide a couple of examples and give an overview of the main expense categories. Suppose the Finance Ministry is preparing a table of government expense components for a budget statement. While preparing the statement, the Finance Ministry staff reviews cash outflows such as the purchase of goods and services, the free provision of medical supplies from the government inventories, capital injections into a public corporation, or write-offs of certain student loans. As it reviews the estimates, the staff first needs to identify the outflows that are classified as expense. Outflows not classified as expense will relate to investment and financing, transactions in assets and liabilities. The GFSM definition of government expense will help. Expense refers to transactions that lead to decreases of net worth. Net worth is equal to total assets minus total liabilities. Financing or investment do not affect net worth. This means expense reduces the value of government's assets or adds to the value of liabilities. One important caveat is that expense only results from transactions with other parties. Holding losses, valuation changes or destruction of assets are not considered expense. With this in mind, let's look at the examples. When considering the transactions related to the purchase of goods and services, the staff has an easy time. When goods and services are paid out of cash, assets decrease. If the purchase is financed through a trade credit, liabilities increase. In both cases, net worth clearly decreases because either assets decrease or liabilities increase. Thus, an expense is recorded. The free provision of medical supplies causes some debate because some of the budget staff do not see a related cash outflow. Indeed, there was no money involved in this transaction, but the GFSM definition settles the debate because the inventory declines and this causes the assets and therefore net worth to decrease. Thus, an expense needs to be reported. The capital injection into the public corporation also stirs some debate. Some argue that this leads to a cash outflow and therefore a decrease in assets and expense should be recorded. Others argue that while cash is reduced, other assets increase because the share of the equity in the corporation is rising. They maintain that this exchange of assets leaves net worth unchanged and a financial transaction should be recorded. Cases like this are not always clear cut. The staff must determine whether the capital injection is a gift to be recorded as an expense or an investment not recorded as an expense. GFSM offers detailed guidance. Finally, the debt write-off. The staff clearly sees that this reduces government net worth because an asset will no longer offer a return. However, because the write-off is a unilateral activity of the government, it is not a transaction with other parties. Remember that the transaction must involve another party. Hence, it is not treated as an expense and it will be recorded elsewhere as an other economic flow. Determining the recording of various types of transactions has important implications. Distinguishing between expense and financing affects key analytical measures, such as the government deficit or surplus and by definition net worth. Once the staff has finished sifting through all of the budgets and has determined which outflows are considered expense, they can start compiling the expense table by economic types of transaction. For this, GFSM provides a detailed classification scheme. The presentation allows for meaningful analysis of various expense components and supports international comparisons. Let's briefly look at this classification scheme. There are eight main categories. Compensation of employees, government employee earnings, for instance, is an important group of expense for most governments because of its size. This category may also include in-kind expenses. These could be benefits provided to employees for the private benefits, such as free bus tickets or housing. Use of goods and services. This comprises all purchase services and goods that are needed to run the government. This may be renting of buildings, buying stationery, or paying for transport costs. Interest paid is an important measure for fiscal analysis. This relates to the level of indebtedness, the level of interest rates and the borrowing terms. By the way, in an accrual accounting system, interest is recorded on a continuous basis regardless of whether actual cash payments are made. Subsidies are recurrent payments to corporations and cover current production costs. 
transfers for investment purposes or debt restructuring are not included here, but in a separate category under other expenses. Grants comprise current and capital transfers to foreign governments, international organizations, and to other general government units. Other expense are typically small in value. They cover all transfers, not elsewhere classified, and some other smaller items. A large value in relation to total expense may indicate an error in classification. Consumption of fixed capital covers the statistical measurement for the wear and tear of assets, such as roads, railways, vehicles and buildings that causes the value of assets to decrease over time. This concept is related, but not identical, to depreciation in accounting. It is an expense item. However, it constitutes an exceptional category as it does not involve interaction with other units. Government transacts with itself by acting both as user and owner of an asset. Before we close, let's direct our attention to a second very useful presentation of government spending. The classification scheme that we just discussed is based on the economic type of expense. In addition, the classification of functions of government, in brief, COFOG, presents government spending according to the policy objective. The COFOG framework includes 10 main categories, such as defense, economic affairs, health and education. Note that this presentation does not only report expense, it encompasses total expenditure, which is expense plus the net investment in non-financial assets, such as buildings and roads. Let's summarize. Expenses refer to transactions involving another party and decreasing net worth, reducing assets or increasing liabilities. We have seen that some expense has no cash impact and some cash payments are not recorded as expense. Classifying expense is an important exercise to determine the impact on government deficit or surplus and to have data that are comparable over time and across countries. Once expenses are identified, they can be presented to Parliament with both an economic classification and along the functions of government.